So now we discuss the concepts of Capital Market 9. Capital Market 9, also known as CML, is a very important concept in the capital asset pricing model. Now, uh, last time we already discussed the concepts of efficient frontier. Every point on this efficient frontier represents a particular portfolio constructed from the equities available in the market. And each point also represents the maximum possible expected return for a given risk. For example, if you can tolerate this amount of risk, then you should take this portfolio so that you will get the highest possible expected return. But when we constructed the efficient frontier, we only taken the risky equity into account. And if we introduce a risk-free equity into the market, we will be able to construct a straight line. And this straight line is the capital market line. First of all, we will try to take a point from this efficient frontier. For example, this point. This point was constructed by investing our money into different risky equities. So now it is a single portfolio. Now if we invest parts of our money into this risky portfolio and then the rest into the risk-free assets, what will happen? So let's look into the equation. The first equation represents the expected return of the total portfolio. The total expected return is just equal to the weight of the risky portfolio times the expected return of the risky portfolio the, and then plus the weight of the risk-free portfolio times the expected return of the risk-free portfolio. So this is simple. Then how about the total risk, which is the standard deviation of the total portfolio? Again, we use the equation we have mentioned before, which is we take the square root, and then here this is the weight of the risky portfolio times the standard deviation of the risky portfolio, take the whole square, and then plus the weight of the risk-free portfolio times the standard deviation, which is the risk of the risk-free portfolio, take the whole square, and then plus 2 times the weight of the risky portfolio times the weight of the risk-free portfolio, and then times the risk of the risky portfolio times the risk of the risk-free portfolio, and then times the correlation. Now, the main point is this. The standard deviation of the risk-free portfolio is actually equals to zero because there's no risk. And then we also know that the weight of the risk-free portfolio is just equal to the one minus the weight of the risky portfolio. So what does it mean? Look into this equation. If the sigma of risk-free is zero, then these two terms become zero. Right? So I can just delete it. So now you see that there is a square root and here is a square. So these two can be cancelled also. So you will see that the standard deviation of the total portfolio is just equal to the standard deviation of the risky portfolio times the weight of the risky portfolio. So from this equation we will know that W risky is just equal to sigma total divided by sigma risky. Right? In this case, we can just substitute this equation into the first equation. So from the first equation, we know that the expected return of the total portfolio is just equal to the expected return of the risk-free assets because we have 1 times expected return of risk-free, and then plus the weight of the risky portfolio uh, times the expected return of the risky portfolio minus the expected return of the risk-free asset. Okay. Uh, let me make it into two nice, and then we can substitute this equation into here. Now we have a new equation, and this is the capital market line. And let me rearrange this term by moving this one to here. Now you see that the expected return of the total portfolio is equal to the expected return of the risk-free assets plus the standard deviation of the total portfolio times 
the difference of the expected return between the risky and risk-free portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. The main point here is that this term a constant. So if we try to plot this one on the graph, this one is actually just the expected return of the total portfolio, like here. And then this one is just the risk, which is the standard deviation of the total portfolio, that is on the x-axis. So this is a straight line. It means that if we are able to combine the risky assets with the risky portfolio from the efficient frontier, then we will have a capital market line like this. So what is the meaning of this line? It means that if we invest 100% of our money into the risky assets, then we will have the expected return equals to the expected return of the risky assets. And of course, the risk is zero because all of our money are invested in the risky assets. And if we invest 100% of our money into the risky portfolio selected from the efficient frontier, then this one will give us the expected return of the risky portfolio with the same risk given by the risky portfolio. However, if we try to invest our money partially into the risky portfolio and the risky portfolio, we will move along this line according to this equation. And this line is called the capital market line. So which portfolio would we choose? The, the answer is that we will choose a portfolio so that this line will be a tangent to the disefficient frontier, like this. Why? This is because if we choose the red line, you see that for some points, our performance it is still worse to the efficient frontier. For example, at this point, for the capital market line, the expected return is less than the efficient frontier for a given risk. But if we choose the green line, which is a tangent to the efficient frontier, every point on the efficient frontier will be below the capital market line. So that means this will be the one picked up by all the investors. So it means that if there is a risky asset that we can invest, the investor can have a more superior return compared to the efficient frontier if they try to diversify their money between the risky assets and the risky assets. And this point is the one and only one. It also means that every investor is going to pick up this point. So this point is called the market's portfolio because every equity has to be owned by someone in the market and everyone is owning the same portfolio. So this point must include every equity in the market. And another important point here is that if the investor try to invest in this region, then we are saying that it is deleveraging. So the investor try to lend out their money. Instead of investing all his money in the stock market, for example, he lend out some of the money for the risky assets. And in this region, we will say that the investor is leveraging the investment. This is because the investor is going to borrow money so that he can buy more stocks. 